Hello everyone, welcome back to the Big Bad Bench. My name is John, aka Big Bad Biologist. And today we're gonna to be working on this mess. This is a 286 motherboard that has massive battery damage due to a Varta leakage. Ah, geez, when could that theoretically ever happen? Um, so yeah, we're gonna work on that. It seems to have a ton of bad traces, so we'll check that all out and get going on this stuff. Um, so, oh, I also wanted to talk about something else, but let's first say hi to folks in chat. We got Martin Mac, AKA Macintosh Unboxed UK, uh, Garth Beagle, Trina's Techno Babble, Alan Gracia, and the Tech Knight. Um, how's it going, everybody? So yeah, this is the board. Um, you can see here's the color of our regular traces at most of the place around the board. And then when we get to this area, these traces are a totally different color. They're all a lovely green color, and some of them look like they have spots missing, so we're gonna go and do some stuff on here. But um, one thing I wanted to do real quick before we get started is uh, talk about something that I worked on last weekend. So this is that 386 slash 486 um, motherboard that I worked on, and um, we were sort of stuck at 25 megahertz. So what I did on Dave's stream, was I unsoldered the uh, crystal oscillator and replaced it. So this had a 50 megahertz crystal oscillator, which gave, divided by two gives us 25 megahertz. And so before we were stuck at 25 megahertz or 50 megahertz or 75. Um, so now we got our 33 megahertz. We got our DX266 that works well. Um, and so this thing um, tested pretty well. Um, so if you check the link in my, in my um, description that talks about the, um, there's my benchmarking link. And so it can, it'll show you all the differences between the 25 and 33. Um, also wanted to point out that there's two additional oscillators here on the motherboard. Um, this one controls the CPU speed for the onboard 386 socket. This one controls the, um, front side bus speed for the 486 socket. So yeah, that's that. This is a fun little project. Um, I'm going to make this thing into an ultimate Windows 3.1 system, uh, DX266. I have a Windows sound system sound card that I've been wanting to do with something. And so that'll be a little fun Windows 3.1 setup. Okay, let's get that off of the big bed bench. And let's look at our mess on this motherboard. Um, so let's, let's hop into the microscope here and get started and see the nastiness. And Epictronics and Jack68K is here. And Francois Rival is here. Welcome everybody, thanks for stopping by. Um, okay, so we've got some coloration here. So we're all the way over at the AT socket, which is sort of the extent of the damage. You can see some, some stuff over here. Um, this big trace that goes from the battery has some stuff. Lots of chips on these boards, yeah. Got bombs here too. What's up? Um, so let's see, where were we? This thing, no, not that thing. This thing is the keyboard controller space. And you can see there was a bunch of nastiness under here. Um, I didn't know if there was, but I sort of assumed there was. Um, and so, yeah, I decided to take that off before the stream. I don't know what this chip is. Um, it might be the keyboard ROM. I'm not totally sure, but um, it actually doesn't look too bad underneath there. But let's let's get to cleaning and let's see what this stuff looks like once we once we get rid of everything off of off of there. Let's see what it looks like. So um, I've showed these before, but this is a little um, like abrasive eraser kind of thing. And it just works really well for cleaning up this kind of stuff.
Ooh, sorry about that noise. It's like I'm just torturing you all this morning. Oof, are the ceramics cracked? I don't know, we'll take a look at that. <sighs> wow, this actually looks way better than I thought it was gonna look. So this board has already gone through the ultrasonic bath. Um, it had a vinegar soak last weekend, went through the ultrasonic bath. Okay, I'm gonna need a... <laughs> I saw a capacitor blown apart. All right, let's see. Oh yeah, look, there's a capacitor. They kind of look like they're cracked. Yeah, look at that. I wonder if the corrosion got up in there and caused that issue. Huh. Huh, how about that? Midlife crisis for these caps. I think it's sort of an end of life crisis. Um, sorry, I lost my little wrench. Where's my little wrench? I just had it. Uh, let's give you this to look at. Mmm, pretty. Use the last of this thing. Split personality, good. That's a good one. That's a good one. Where the heck did I just put my little wrench for my... Oh, there it is. How did you get all the way over there, little wrench? You're on the other side of the big bad bench. Dave Diamond's here. How's it going? Am I missing anybody that has said hi? I apologize. <laughs> so... I see one bad trace so far. I'm surprised I don't see more than that. This is kind of wild. I was, I was expecting this to look way worse. I could have just booted it up, sent it, see one, see what happened. No, I like to check stuff first. <laughs> oh yeah i forgot to mention so trina thank you for telling people to to hit like but even more importantly i'm giving away a commodore 64 and um a kung flu flash cart and uh power supply all you have to go do is leave a comment on last week's video and you will be entered.
Yeah, this is kind of wild. <sighs> Gonna turn the board slightly to get a different angle on this. thing is chewing up the um, <coughs> eraser points now. We're getting a little mean to our eraser points on this board. Yeah, there's probably like a broken trace underneath the board somewhere. Hey, Starbucks, huh? You should have seen how fuzzy this thing looked before we got started. So last week it was, it was very, very fuzzy. Um, Wow, yeah, look at all these cracked capacitors. That is wild. Let's poke at it. Poking at things is fun, right? Hi, hi, hi. Oh, there it goes. Huh. Wild. Gotta finish, finish polishing up that air. It's like a fried clam. <sighs> Tech Knight always takes detailed pics when they are fuzzy. Yeah, well the issue was like this whole area of the board was was fuzzy. So yeah, so I, I told the story, it's not much of a story. So I bought this system, I don't know, like a year or a year and a half ago. And I realized that it had a bad, or it had a battery bomb. And I pulled a card out of it that I wanted to use. And I totally forgot about the Varda bomb. And so it's been festering for a year. And so it's way worse because of me. Well. I mean, I guess it had a lot of years to do it f first, but I should have gotten to this project sooner. Sorry, I keep moving this around so much. All right, I think what I'm gonna do Gonna change up one more time and get some of these. And I think we might be like there almost. <laughs> buy mask and solder mask comp, uh, buy stock in solder mask company says Jack 68K. Yeah, that's good. Um, 
so actually when I do these, I don't, unless there's a reason that like the trace looks like it's going to get shorted out on something, I'll show you what I do in a second, but I just cover it with solder. Um, because basically that's enough to prevent corrosion, right? Um, that's really what we care about. If it was something that was likely to short out on something, then I would put solder mask. Man, it's like we're at the dentist this morning. A little bit more there. Let's go back to this, show you where we've been working on. <sighs> Oof, oh, I shouldn't have done that. <sighs> the second one wasn't as bad. So that all cleaned up really nice. And from what I can tell, we only have one broken trace over here. So I think what we're gonna do is put on our our socket, I put a new socket on here. <laughs> Macintosh Unboxed UK says, I'd be worried if my patients had green bits flying off. Yeah, that's, uh, that's how my dentist has gone sometimes. Oh my God, there's green dust all over the big bad bench. Oh, this is bad. Oh, I made a mess. Why did I do this on stream and not in the yard? <laughs> Um, the other concerning bit is, see how there's like some discoloration under the board? That tells me that there might be um, some corrosion that got down between the layers. And that could potentially cause some issues. <laughs> yeah, I think there's really only one bad trace on this thing. And do a little bit over here. <sighs> All right, let's get the beat machine out. Oops, I left the beat machine on. So that big honking trace is good. That one might, oh no, I was looking at the wrong thing. There and there, that's good, that's good. Wow. Yeah, that one is definitely broken. And let's go over here. I don't think I got all that solder mask off of there. Oh, we could zoom in a little bit, although I might. Were you looking at the back of my head? That's always interesting content. There we go. How's that? So 
this guy. Are you looking at the back of my head? No, no, that's good. This one should go. There we go. Wow, that's good. That's good. Holy crap. Wow. <laughs> we got beeps. I only, I'm only seeing one bad trace on this. This is ridiculous. All right, we are giving a shout out to, uh, I think this board is a DTK PTM 1000. Good copper DTK from whatever, this is 1988. What's going on, Steve? Mac 84, welcome. Lick it clean. You know it. That's what we do here on the Big Bad Bench. Whatever it takes. Um, so actually, what I'm going to do is turn on my big, big honking solder iron, soldering iron. Yeah, I would imagine DK, DTK is probably watching this. <clears throat> I got some of this stuff. I'm not as big of a fan of this stuff as I am with like regular old isopropanol. Um, this was the socket for the keyboard controller. Let's take this off. Might need to polish up some of these pins. So we should be able to move into the quiet part of the, the stream. Oh, there was, we're, we're going to have to use the thing one more time. We got some green, green down in there. So yeah, we're not going to reuse this socket. Huh? Yeah, probably a good idea. We don't reuse that socket. I think that socket is toast. Crunchy, crunchy. That's that side. So when you, you know, when you're using this and you're working on pins, make sure that your, your, um, like the direction is going away from the pin, right? So like I was polishing the tops of this. So now on this one, I'm going to polish the insides of these. I'm not going to go this way. If you go this way and the, the polishing bits going on there, you catch it on your pins and kind of mess them up. Don't ask me how I know that. It's not like I've ever done it before. Yeah, that looks way better now. Theoretically, we should be able to get some good contact there. This chip, again, I don't know what chip this was. That was the keyboard controller we just did. This thing had some nastiness on it. We're gonna give that a little isopropanol and let that soak. Okay, um, 
So what are we going to do first? We are going to smear a whole lot of flux on this thing. We are going to flux the heck out of this board where we've exposed all of the traces. Okay, we're fluxed up. Rally scoot, not a great idea to work above the motherboard. Yeah, that's true. All right, and somewhere we should have some solder wick. And I'm gonna clean my tip so I don't have any residual junk on there. And so I'm just gonna apply some solder here. So you wanna be real careful. Actually, I'm gonna switch us to the microscope again. To the mic. Whoa, whoa, easy microscope. All right. So I just laid some solder down there. I have some solder on my giant tip. And so we're just going to use our um, solder wick to lay down an even coat of solder all over those traces. And when you're doing this, whenever you're using solder wick, you want to be really careful in that you make sure that you're um, moving the solder wick or solder braid, whatever you want to call it, with the soldering iron tip and don't pull on the braid itself because that's a really easy way to lift up a trace. Oops. And you can't see what I'm doing. That's the problem with the microscope. Where the heck are we? I lost you. Come back. There we are. Um, for doing the traces, you're going to want to use something much smaller than this. Um, I'm going to show you. We have, we have our trace that we're about to use. or our, We're going to have to repair one of these traces in a second. So I'll show you my smaller iron for that. Um, I just want to get these all sort of covered up before we solder back on our socket. But yeah, this, this giant iron is way too much to do a single trace. It's good for doing this kind of thing. It gets a lot of heat into the board, gets that everything nice and coated. Is the wicking wire the easiest method? For me, Doing this to, to recoat all of these traces is the easiest method. Um, oh, we should double check that trace. I don't like the way that one looks. And also, if you need to use a, if you're going to need to um, repair a trace, getting some solder on that trace before you get started, it's useful. 
Let's check that trace. I don't like the looks of that one. Um, where's our beepy? Okay, Mr. Beepy. No, we're good. Okay. There's a baloney cut tip. Well, so yes, solder braid wick, whatever you want to call it, is typically used to remove solder, but it can only hold so much solder. And so if you saturate the, the wick with solder, then you can kind of use it to just like coat your traces. You have to make sure to use a lot of flux in this situation, though. I normally don't use anywhere near as much flux as I do in this situation. I'm very, very restricted with my flux usage. Oh, there's a couple traces there I don't necessarily like. Let's take a look at those. This just gets us a nice even coating of solder all over our traces. And again, make sure that you're heating up your, your wick thoroughly. And normally you don't need to do it this much, right? We just had a ton of damage or a ton of potential corrosion on this board. So that's why it was kind of useful to do this. Um, all right, let's look at those traces again. Where were they? That's good. Oh, here. That's good. That's good. Wow, okay. We're good. Okay. And we can get to that afterwards. So what I want to do is just make sure that we get a nice clean socket on there. I'm going to isopropanol this all up, make it nice and clean. Um, Gonna use a little, little brushy brush. But I was really worried about what was happening underneath that, those sockets, or at least this chip and this socket. Uh, so I'm gonna get Kim wipe and go back over everything with the Kim wipe on top. Suck up some of that dirt. Yeah, I was wondering what baloney cut meant. <laughs> all right. You can see that all looks pretty nice and even now. Okay, let's go back to here. Okay, go by a microscope and I'm gonna shut that off, turn that soldering iron on and find it. Socket. I think this is the socket we need. Should be a 40 pin. Yep. Okay. Now, one of the bad things when you do this is you remove your um, uh, silk screening, <laughs> but I made sure to note to myself and you can kind of still see it there that this goes this way. Make sure that your pins are all lined up right here. Oh, this is a recycled socket. I don't recycle sockets normally. Is this a 40 pin? Yes, that's a 40 pin. Oh, it says it too. Okay. 
So one of my socket pins has some junk in there. Okay, so we're gonna have to clear out that hole. It's that second one. Now we can use our solder braid to do its intended purpose here. Get rid of the old junk. I think we're all clear. So now, there you go. That went in real nice. Gonna stick this up there so that it's applying a little pressure to the socket. One on that side, one on that side, and now melting them, pushing up on the socket to make sure it's fully seated. Okay, so that's all on there. Um, I kind of want to socket this other chip. I don't have don't have sockets of that size, I don't think. Let's see here. Oh. No. Okay. So we are going to do something janky. We never do anything janky here on the Big Bad Bench, do we? take this 40 pin socket and turn it in to a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 24 pin socket. Gut Bomb says that's why I'm here. All right. Do I know my audience or what? Woo. Woo. <laughs> And then we're just going to cut ourselves a little bit here. Remember kids, never cut towards yourself. Let's trim this up a little bit there, a little bit there, a little bit there. Make it a little bit closer. Okay. <laughs> I've done this before and it makes me feel icky. <laughs> yes. If this were like a super nice board, I'd wait until I actually had real sockets, but we're dealing with a 286 here. 286s are sort of a dime a dozen, and it's not like it's a um, 5170 or something like that. It's just a DTK. Although, mad props to the DTK for their copper. Hey, Justin D. Morgan is here, at least until he needs to go put on a new mailbox. <laughs> okay. All right. Who wants to feel icky? And we're going this way again. Oh, I filled up some of my holes, so we're going to need to clear out those vias. Um,
yeah, if you get your um, mounting plate off of eBay, then uh, the mailman could just install it for you. all of our whole our vias are cleared up let's see if this socket goes in there excellent it's almost like it's a, a actual 24 pin socket there so so not janky up and make sure it's sitting flat okay so the sockets are aligned let's do let's do some rapid fire soldering under here go back to the microscope Really need to have some sort of music for these kinds of events. Rapid fire soldering deserves some sort of music. are cranking. This might be my most productive stream ever. Well, we'll see what happens when we power this beast on. Oh, we're going to have to take off all those crack capacitors, aren't we? Ah, oh, geez. All right, where are all those? They should be these. There's our big connectors for that. And there's all of these. So we're gonna put some fresh solder down, make it a little easier to flow. Like I said, easier to flow. There it goes. <laughs> I might need to get out the big soldering iron for this since there's ground planes. Ooh. 
while we're waiting, just a reminder to go back and check out last week's stream and leave a comment underneath of it and you'll be entered for a chance to win a Commodore 64 package. Um, oh, we got to solder the other thing. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. All right. I got to clean my tip off because I'm not just doing something stupid. We're doing real soldering now, so we got to have our make sure our tips nice and clean. That one's probably a ground based off of how much heat it's sucking up. Gonna leave my tip on there on a second. Yeah, I should sing and dance on my streams. That's a way to lose subscribers pretty quickly. I don't have the voice that Steve has. Mac 84, that guy can sing. I don't think that's going to happen, Trina. I can barely walk. We're getting close. 24 more pins. <laughs> Alan says no. <laughs> Instant unsubscribe. I would probably unsubscribe to myself. Garth is making a huge mess, goo gone, trying to get stickers off a of MacBook Air. Well, at least with a, a MacBook Air, you can use harsher stuff. You're not going to melt it like if it was one of the old MacBooks. Oh, that one's likely attached to a ground plane. Come on, flow, you jerk. There we go. Oof, we're going to have to come back to that one. You can tell which ones are attached to the ground. Fun fact, years ago I'd use peanut butter to loosen up the adhesive. <sighs> That's nasty. I guess that was something I never, like whenever you got like uh, chewing gum stuck in your hair and they'd tell you to put peanut butter in it. Um, not that that happened all too often to me, but I would get weird sticky stuff on me, sap. My dad was a car guy and we had tons of chemicals in, the, in his garage growing up. So he always had some sort of chemical that would take the, the stickiness off me. <laughs> Turpentine, kerosene, all kinds of fun things that 
you probably shouldn't be coding small children in. All right, I think that's all of those. Um, let's fix our trace and then we'll come back and, oh, sorry. Um, we'll come back and do the other thing. Okay, so we gotta refocus here. There we go, there's our bad trace. Let's, oh, no wonder I kept getting sticky. I forgot to run the, solder braid all over that stuff so this tip is is small so this is not the ideal tip to do this kind of thing and you can see it's not going to do this giant trace very well at all I think I remember my grandfather telling me that he gave me a bath in gasoline at one point. Might explain some things. Okay, so that's our bad trace. So what we're going to use here is a piece of um, Ethernet wire. So one of the strands from an Ethernet cable. I have a sacrificial Ethernet cable that I keep around for these purposes. Now I just need to find my forceps. Let's use this side. This one's kind of straight. I'm gonna clean my tip off. Lay some flux on here. Apply a little bit of solder to the tip, which I can't see because I can't see in through two dimensions, three dimensions here. Oh, geez, you couldn't see what I was doing. It was like the best one I've ever done. Um, just come in, touch that one to there. And then we're gonna wiggle this. And that is lovely, 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 lovely. Although we haven't checked to make sure it actually works yet. So let's reflow that. Okay, so that should be good. Let's beep it up. All right, we got our trace fixed. Now what we gotta do is turn on our big soldering iron. And go back to here. So that was the trace that we just repaired right there. What else? All right, so we need to pop off these caps. That one. Uh, 
That's wild. That is some wild stuff. So I guess I'm gonna use my tweezers. To grab them. And then we're gonna use our giant soldering iron. So these were ones that I already just put fresh solder on so that it should flow a little bit easier. One. Two. Come on, John. Three. That one doesn't look bad, but we're going to take it off anyway. We'll replace them all at some point. Four. Five. Oh. I also wanted to reflow a couple of these joints because they were on ground planes and looked a little scarfy because there wasn't enough heat in my other tip. Yes, you can remind me to buy tips again. I forgot. Two eighty six turbo board. How fast is it? It is a whopping ten megahertz. Ow, ow, ow. This is why I use the tweezers. <laughs> okay. There's another bad one here. two pads. Let's get the tweezers again. that one um, all right so that's those did this thing just die oh my god I've been trying to do a scan disk on this board on this drive 
for days and it keeps quitting. Um, okay, let's take Rally Scoot's advice and set the board away for a second and let's polish up these pins. This one had one short weird pin. Oh, I just did the thing I told you not to do. I hope we don't have to solder this in and I'm gonna have to unsolder that socket. The jank socket. We'll see. We'll see if it touches. All right. It's a rubber with some like abrasive built into it. Impregnated, I think is the official terminology. Um, they, these work really well for polishing. Well, cleaning off corrosion anyway. Alrighty. Let's see. I think what I'm also going to do, well, aside from clean up a little bit of dust, I'm going to shoot these chips off with some deoxit. Can't really hurt anything. Get rid of our gross deoxid mess. Okay. Have a nice day, Justin. Good luck with the mailbox. Okay, that clicked in nicely. That clicked in nicely. This might be the exciting part. We might, uh, we might make some fire. Let's see what happens. Um, first, I want to make sure that those pins are actually touching. Um, I forget if it was the left one or the right one, but we'll check real quick. We'll check them both. So this pin, I forget which one of these two was shorter. That one's connected. And that one's connected. All right, good. Uh, so what do you think? Should we power this thing up? Oh, let's check and see if we have shorted tantalums. Nope. 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 All right. That doesn't mean that it won't short as soon as we power it up. But uh, yeah, you can use nail polish. I have this stuff, you know, actual um, solder mask. It's a pain in the butt. Um, there are certain times when you should put some solder mask on there. Um, all right, let's zoom out a little bit. Show you the board as a whole. So what we're going to do is put in a video card. We're going to pretend like this is just going to go. Um, there was some corrosion in the socket, so I'm going to stick that in there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that was going to work. Um, where did my diagnostic card go? I just had it. Oh, there it is. It's right here. I 
Okay, we're gonna go towards the rear. Power supply. do a bad thing and just shut that darn computer off because I need its keyboard. Y'all saw it. I did a bad thing. Yeah, it can be a little difficult to get the solder mask to look nice and flow. The nice thing about it is since it does take so long to set, sometimes it does flow out very nicely. Um, all right. Uh, we need our monitor too, just in case. Here. And we need electricity. Oh, this thing needed to shut off anyway. I'm sorry. Okay. I don't know why I'm doing the monitor. I really don't think this thing's going to power up. Garth says, shame, John. <coughs> Excuse me. I think I got some green dust in my mouth. <clears throat> okay. Everyone ready? Here we go. In three, two, one. <gasps> we got a beep. and We got another beep. <gasps> we got stuff showing up on the screen. We got a lot of beeps, though. We shouldn't have this many beeps. Check battery. All right, so we have some sort of a reboot issue. It's doing a thing. Let's show you. So it counts up the RAM, does a full, it gets to its one meg of RAM basically, and then it shuts off wonder if putting a battery on will do anything for it. Um, where's my, my janky battery from last week? Um, okay. Whoop, beeps and no fire. It's anxious. Um, let's go back to here. So this battery has a little thing in it, which is nice because it doesn't let you put it in the wrong way. Actually, I think what I'm going to do is just cut the pin off of here. That would be a weird thing. Um, hey, Chris Angelis. Janky, janky is always the word here on the big bad bench. All right, so let's see if we can figure out which one of these is ground. That one is ground. Okay. I'm going to defile a board by clipping this pin. Let's try this again. Nope. Constant reboot. Well, that's interesting. Hmm. Hmm. Future stream idea. Fill every open socket slash slot on this board. It says check battery. I, we, we checked the battery. So that might tell us that there is something wrong with one of these. Um, I wonder if one of these capacitors is actually useful for something. 
Mm, what are these capacitors? Yeah, like Rally Scoot says. So it still says check battery. don't think I have the right kind of caps for this. I like that it's just kind of doing its thing. It's actually kind of interesting too that the, it's not the reset, it's, it's the blah blah blah, the reset thing that's doing this. Yeah, I don't have the right kind of caps for this. Darn. Yeah, one of them is connected to a IC here. Um, so yeah, darn. Well, that's what I thought that they would just remove the ripple, but in reality, it might actually do something with one of these chips. Sometimes, sometimes caps actually do something aside from just smoothing out electricity. Um, Darn. <laughs> Stay tuned for part number two. Yeah. So, uh, I guess this part, oh, it changed. Oh, look. Holy crap. <laughs> it stopped and it started doing a thing. It just wanted time. Look at that. Does our keyboard work? Oh, the keyboard works. Nice. I was worried about the keyboard after all that, um, after all the mess around there. Oh, that's awesome. Very cool. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> oh, geez. Um, so four. Um, we have 384, I think. Oh, look at the date. It's 4040. Oh, 12, 12, 1995. And then seven, EGA, MGA, our auto set. I guess we can't do that. All right, um, I think I need to center this thing. Menu. I see the bottom. How do we, oh, there we go. We're gonna hit nine. Yes. Come on. System memory doesn't match, run setup. Okay, we did that. One. Hmm. Hmm. What does the memory count up to there? I thought it said 384. Let's pay attention. 384. Yeah, okay. It's looking for a floppy drive. We got no floppy. Yay! Oh man, that is awesome. Oh, geez. Yeah, that's totally year 2K compliant. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, um, that is something else. So basically, it was nasty, and we repaired one trace, and it seems like it's kind of working. But I'm going to have to find all these little caps and um, do
do that and let's see if this thing stabilizes but then maybe next weekend we'll put this into a system this system has a really cool uh hard drive yeah sorry one sec so it had this cms hard drive in there and i have a feeling this thing's going to sound awesome spinning up so we're gonna uh, we're gonna wait to do that until next week. Ah, <sighs> good stuff. Um, so yeah, I think we're gonna call it here. That that's exciting. I can't believe that powered up relatively easy. Good job, DTK. <coughs> Excuse me, on um, some nice copper on these things, so that that held up really well, and even in the face of some nasty Varta damage. And uh, this thing is good. Um, so yeah, thank you all for stopping by today. Um, I really appreciate you. And a uh, reminder to, um, to go check out last week's video and leave a comment there um, and be entered to win a Commodore 64. My pa brand new power supplies for the C64s came in this week. So we're gonna be playing with them in a future stream. Um, yeah, I do have green flakes poisoning, so um, I might not be around next week if I, if I die from that. So, it's been fun, y'all. Um, have a lovely week, and I will talk to you next week. Check out Dave's Vintage Apple Tech stream tomorrow. I'm not sure if Tech, Amber, Tech Ambrosia is streaming tonight, but if she is, definitely check out her stream. And, um, yeah, have a good one.